We would not uh, be ashamed of it. We would not hide the fact that she has Alzheimer's. I just think I had no idea what was ahead. I could handle it. I was a superwoman. It's like watching a person dissolve in front of you gradually. They're just disappearing. And Alzheimer's is incurable and irreversible and uh, uh, terminal. My husband has frontotemporal dementia. He's my husband of 40 some years. He's a geologist and he has Alzheimer's. I am a caregiver to my wife, Ida. I have been uh, since she was diagnosed uh, back in 2001. I'm Joanne Priest. Say who you are. I'm Gordon Priest. Gord has Alzheimer's, has been diagnosed for 10 years. We have lived together for 45 years. I've been a caregiver for 11 years. My mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I take care of my mother, Mary. My mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's five years ago. Jilly was diagnosed with Alzheimer's several years ago. My husband has a form of dementia called frontal temporal dementia. Jim was um, diagnosed with dementia of the Alzheimer's type about three years ago. He'd had it for uh, 12 years. I was born in 1917, and so if you do the arithmetic, you come out to 94. <laughs> Dementia is an all-encompassing term that describes illnesses um, generally in older people that can cause trouble with thinking, with memory, social relationships. Uh, you shot at a real man. <laughs> I think your shooter goes off because you didn't shoot at uh, one of the other opponents. Then, then now, this is your shooter. This one. Yeah. Now you have to shoot the black one. Uh, oh. You want to take your turn over again? No. Hmm? No. Because what you have there, you should only have two. Uh, we take turns going around, and you had your turn, uh, and you've got two left, you see. But if you pull this out there, you're making, giving yourself an extra turn. Mm -hmm. Is that the way you want to play? Then. <laughs> And there are various types. Alzheimer's is by far the most common type and generally presents with uh, impaired memory. Vascular dementia tends to cause memory problems as well. We also see errors of judgment in these people. Frontal lobe dementia is a very uncommon type, generally presenting earlier in life and uh, is noticed mainly by lack of social tact, lack of judgment early on. And then finally, uh, Lewy body dementia, another relatively common one that will present with memory impairment, fluctuations, hour to hour, day to day, and uh, often visual hallucinations. There's no doubt that a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease or dementia can be very intimidating. These are scary words. It's something that no one wants to hear. It's about the worst news that you can get, and you wish it wasn't true. Embarrassed, uh, afraid of what other people will think. There's always a shyness. At first, I didn't tell people. I would say about the first six to eight months, I didn't say anything. When you're first confronted with it, it's frightening because most people don't know a lot about it. Usually they're not aware of the, 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 grav the gravity of the situation, uh, the impact that it has on the caregiver. Uh, they're not aware that uh, it's a 24 hour, uh, seven days uh, um, a week uh, care. Unfortunately, a caregiver is, is filled with guilt. Um, you're filled with guilt because 
Um, you feel you should be there for them. You feel that you know them the best. You can give them the best care. Um, your time with them is limited. The stresses of memory loss and dementia and Alzheimer's can overwhelm a family. I find being a caregiver extremely stressful. I'm still trying to learn how to cope with the stress. Of course it's been stressful over the, the last 10 years because our lives have changed. Things that I take for granted as being understandable takes some added explanation. Medical illnesses are also seen more commonly in caregivers so that they have to find a way to um, get the support they need, which will become more and more important as time goes on, as the dementia progresses. Um, stupidity on my part, absolutely. Thought I could do it all. Um, and I've told all those people in the support group, I said, you're waiting too long, you have to, and they, they messed up too. You're on your own. You are on your own. And I waited too long. I waited too long until one day I figured, oh my God, I'm caught in this. And I was, and I knew it because I was losing patience with them. Sad to say, the numbers of people supporting will diminish and their support will diminish. You have this um, physical inability to do everything when it's 24 hours every day. None of us were ever trained as caregivers. So it's a learning experience, and every day you learn something new. Uh, one of the things you really um, have to develop is patience. I think stress probably will get to me faster than it'll get to Gord. Oops. Many people are resistant to seeking community support and assistance. Uh, it may be that it's too difficult to appreciate the difficulties that someone is experiencing and too difficult to appreciate that help really is needed. Almost like a denial that any help is needed. Before I went to CCAC, I sort of, in, in the Alzheimer's Society, I was lost. My suggestion usually is to see, uh, to meet with someone at the lo local Alzheimer's Society. They often have uh, very good programs going on, resources, but more importantly, the ability to meet others who are going through the illness and learn from them uh, on how they cope, not only at an emotional level, but also coping with all the different kind of changes that come along, the, the financial concerns people have. Look into every corner, find out everything there is to know. Access as much as you can. One thing that I did do uh, early in this whole thing to help me cope better was to take advantage of all the seminars uh, that Alzheimer's Society provides. Well, I think the fact that we um, asked for services right away when we knew that she had to diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it certainly helped her and helped us uh, not change her life too much. In order to keep doing, being there as a caregiver, you have to stay healthy. And the only way is, is to accept some of the services. The support groups show you that you're not dealing with this alone. Individuals should be strongly recommended to even open their homes to individuals who provide assistance at home. Welcome to the guest house, a home away from home. This is a 12 bedroom facility for people suffering from mild to moderate dementia. They come here for a day, a week, uh, every second weekend, and they come and stay with us while their caregivers get rest at home. I wasn't taking any holidays, I wasn't doing anything, so finally I asked, um, so a friend of mine took me to um, the guest house. And I saw, looked at there and I started to cry and I figured, oh, I can't leave my husband here, the poor guy, you know. So I tried it and he loved it. You know, he really, really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend that caregivers use the guest house. I think it's a wonderful home-like situation. 
they get good care, and it's just a great facility at a reasonable cost. In the guest house, it's wonderful, it really is. The people who do the services there are really nice. The day program is a, a respite program, which enables caregivers to get some respite. Respite meaning take a rest. Leslie looks forward to going, and it's good for me because it just gives me a complete break and change, so I would highly, highly recommend it. My mother had 15 kids and a huge family, so she never had a friend that she could say she had a best friend. And from her day program in her 70th or 75th year, she found a friend. And when she passed away, she could say that she had a really good friend and it was just through the day programs. And it's something that we always cherish because we never heard my mom call someone a friend. We as caregivers sometimes lose sight of the, the, the fact that uh, there are two people involved in, in this struggle or this journey that is going on. One of the persons is the caregiver himself. And uh, there is n no benefit in trying to prove to the world that you're a superman. Uh, if there are facilities available, such as the guest house, that will bear some of the load to kind of give you time to get your batteries recharged or allow you time to do something that uh, otherwise you couldn't do, uh, I can only speak very highly of that. And if there is such a facility available, take advantage of it when you need it. I know what you're going through. I know that it's a struggle. I know that there's big challenges. And I know that the best thing for him or her is home. One of the ways where you can keep your loved one at home longer is to get respite. Respite if he goes or he go, she goes to a day program, respite at the guest house, respite when you can get somebody to stay in for a while with them. It's very, very important. That's what I have to say. And I struggled with it. We all struggle with it. But if you want to be there till for the run, and if you want your loved one to stay at home, which is still, in my mind, the best place to be, well, you have to make changes and take care of yourself. People often stop thinking about themselves or taking care of themselves, which contributes to them being more at risk for things such as depression. I really have a hard time putting myself into someone's position that would be hesitating to use services, support services. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because it's just been so helpful. By having that extra time to yourself, you can give more of yourself than to your partner who has the disease, just by going out and having some time on your own. You're doing yourself a disservice by not, by not doing this because you're not helping yourself the very best you can help yourself. So I absolutely think you need help. And to wait for a crisis, um, you've put yourself through hell um, when maybe you didn't have to. Maybe you had signs of it coming or you knew better how to, you would learn better how to deal with it. Um, gee, if the help is there, why not get it? For Mom and I, it's sort of uh, funny. We've got much closer together because of this disease, even though she is actually fading away. Uh, I've learned to cherish the little things. The sudden smile, the uh, sharing of a joke, um, making her supper and having her enjoy it. And I'm very happy. Make each day count. And that's the best way to do it. Not thinking, oh, it's awful, or ain't it awful, dear? <laughs> no.